Okay, in this video, we are going to take our redo, okay? This is what we were doing in the last one. And we are going, we, we already set this up in the last video. So we have rotational motion one, rotational motion two, and rotational motion three. We need to get rotational motion uh, two's data in, and I actually have that in already. So this is two. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to select this video, uh, I'm going to select this section of the data, so I can just be up on, you know, be in the same uh, mirror what I'm doing on the other. Um, so I'm going to copy, and then I'm just going to go back. I'm going to go to my rotational motion one, two, three. And I am going to, you know what, I don't need all of that. So let me go in here. And I was thinking, you know what, I think that I will. So I'm going to unhide that. And I'm going to take all of that information, drag it over, and then I'm going to paste. I'm going to give this a different color just to indicate that I've pasted this information in from somewhere. Okay, and notice that my radius changed immediately. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab the velocities. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. The reason why I'm taking time over is because maybe later on I might need that data for something else. And now I would think that I would have the same time when I might not have the same time. So I go back into redo. Uh, hopefully it'll open up. And it did not. Rotation and rotational motion. So we see that we have the, um, we've already changed that. So we're just going to go ahead and paste. In here, and you see the color changed. I'm going to call that green as well. Uh, and I'll just make it the same green as we did before. And you'll see that the tangential velocity uh, changed, and our angular acceleration um, doesn't change. The average angular it changes a little bit. It goes from 1.99, I mean 1.89 to 1. Point, I mean to 8.9. So if I go back to rotational motion one and pull this over, you'll see that we have 1.89 for the angular average angular velocity, and you'll see that the resultant acceleration is 0.35. So if we go to uh, this page, you'll see that our average angular velocity is 1.88. That's not much of a change. So with that saying right now, if your hypothesis was that the angular acceleration will not change uh, along the length of the rod uh, from the pivot point, then you are correct. Or your hypothesis, uh, you fail to reject your hypothesis. Okay? But the resultant acceleration is increasing. Okay? Uh, and let's continue on with the uh, number three. And so number three hasn't been changed. It's not green. And so let me go back and let me grab that data. It's under rotational motion three. And let me grab that data. I'm going to copy, go back, and then go back to redo. And we're just going to go ahead and unhide our time. Copy all this over and insert. No paste. And then I'm just going to go ahead and grab this, make sure that it's, we give it some other color. We call it a red. Um, then, of course, we can hide time again if we wanted to. I'm going to go back to that same sheet, rotational motion three. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab this information. I'm going to copy that. Go back to rotational motion one, two, three, redo. Open that up.
change my velocities out. So I'm just going to paste those, and I'm going to make those red as well. Okay, so now you see that the radius changed. The radius has changed, and the tangential velocity changed. Uh, the angular velocity did not change. It is approximately the same. So it should propagate all the way through, and it is. Okay, and our resultant acceleration did change. So the further away we get, the greater the acceleration. Okay, which is probably why we experience those ex things that we experience on roller coasters or those rides at the amusement parks. Ooh, scary. So um, in the next video, we are going to look at each one of those, uh, probably again. And, um, that's okay. <laughs>